Hi, my name is Melinda and I'm going to do part three in my vectoring series. This video is called Vectoring Using Interpolation. Now if I were to just uh, click on this file, uh, sorry, click on the Auto Vector button, which is also in your Puzzles Inspiration just under a different name with a different icon, probably says Otter or it has the word trace in there or something like that. If I were now to click on this file, and since it is a black and white, if I go to the one-to-one -one ratio and just move it around and even increase the color plane, you'll see that nothing's changing because there's no color to increase. So I'll just leave it back at two and click on OK. And what you're going to see is the image is now going to vectorize. Now, because this image that I took the original image off of the internet, you see there is a box around it that you can't really see because it's white on white, but the software does see this and therefore has created a box. This um, copy of this file is not very good and I'll tell you why. This is a direct copy off of the internet. I did not turn this into black and white. This was black and white. And if we zoom in, you can see that the original file is extremely pixelated and the copy of the file, while smooth, is not very good. In fact, I can't even read these words, which over here say Honeybee Activity Book, and over here pretty much doesn't say much of anything. The only thing that I can basically make out is the word book and uh, O-N-E-Y. So what we're going to do is we're going to make this cutting file, actually this image file, turn into a much better cutting file than what I just got. I'm going to click on All and I'm going to click on Undo and Undo again. Next what I'm going to do is click on the Select Element button and I'm going to click once on my image so it is selected. Since I am using an image file, I'm going to go to the word image at the top of the screen and I'm going to go to interpolation. Now we have two options. We have standard, which will blow up your image however big you want it, but it will not leave you a copy of your original image. And then we have average. Average will do everything that standard does, however it will leave you a copy of your original image. This might be very helpful for those of you just using this feature and who are not that familiar with it to begin with. You always then have a copy that you can use later if you found you've made a mistake. I'm going to use standard because that's the one I always use and I'm actually going to enter the number 5 and it will blow it up 5 times its original size. If I click on all and move this image out of the way, you're going to see my 12 by 12 inch page. This shows me that this image that has been blown up is gigantic. So I'm just going to put it back over here and this time what I'm going to do is to turn it into black and white. The reason I'm going to turn it into black and white is this image is extremely pixelated as you saw when I tried to color vectorize it. So click on this box over here with the color red, green, blue and yellow and once you've clicked on it you click on your image. Let's go to the one to one ratio and let's just move this so you can get a better view. This is the original pixelated file and this would be the new image if I were to leave it at this intensity. I think this looks like a very good intensity. Let's have a look at the letters. They look pretty good as well. I'm going to click on OK and now the image, even though it was originally black and white, is now black and white with the pixels um, more sharpened. All I need to do is make sure that I've got um, Bege selected because I don't have any corners on this file except for the legs and I don't really have too many curves so I'd like to use Bege since I do have a couple of lines. All I'm going to do is click on the magic wand that's in the front over here and then click on my image. Now it's going to um, turn it into a cutting file and it is going to take a little bit of time. You'll see it's not going as fast as it usually does and that's because this image is now a very large file. Once it's finished vectoring, you're going to notice it on the other side of the screen. Now you can see the words Honey Bee Activity Book. It's much, much clearer. So if I go into wireframe, we can see these letters as well. And if I zoom in even closer, let's go to the original and to the uh, copied version. So here we have the original image. I'm just going to close this here. 
you can see it's pixelated. Well, not so pixelated anymore, but you can see there's still a little bit of bumpy stuff. And over here, this is now our brand new vectored image, and you can actually read the word honeybee activity book. So that is how we use interpolation, and we would only use that if when we vectorize an image, it doesn't come to our standards. And then it's always a good idea to turn it into black and white as well, just to get rid of the first layer of pixels and to smoothen it out a bit. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me. My email address is lovemyzombie at yahoo.ca.